What is up guys, DZ here, and today we are finally talking about Joey Wheeler's Spell and Trap cards. So I mentioned this a few weeks ago when I talked about Yugi Moto's Spell and Trap cards, but basically when I first started doing this anime character review series, I broke each character up into two different episodes, one for their monsters and one for their Spell and Trap cards. I never got around to talking about Yugi or Joey's Spell spell and trap cards, and it's been like almost two years, so I'm finally doing that. We talked about Yugi a few weeks ago, and today we're talking about Joey Wheeler. How this series works is I look at an anime character and I talk about the cards that they played in the anime that also saw play in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG at real life tournaments. If you're interested in learning about Joey Wheeler's monster cards that saw play at tournaments, I'll make sure to link that video at the end of this one. Before we talk about Joey's spell and trap cards though, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Ridge Wallets. If you're sick of your old outdated bulky leather wallet, then Ridge Wallets are the perfect upgrade for you. They're sleek, they're industrial, they hold up to 12 cards, and they have a convenient money clip on the back for carrying cash. If you go to ridge.com slash dzeef and use promo code dzeef at checkout, you'll get 10% off of your order. Ridge has been a longtime channel sponsor, so thank you once again for sponsoring today's video. All right, back to Joey Wheeler's spell and trap cards. Of course, like many of the original series characters, he played a lot of currently banned cards, things like Pot of Greed and Monster Born, as well as cards like Giant Trunade. That part isn't that surprising. A lot of those older characters had cards like that in their decks. So let's move on to some of the more Joey-specific cards. For example, Joey was known for playing Scapegoat. This has been a fantastic competitive card throughout many different years in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Just in case you don't know what this card does, it is a quick play spell that says, Special Summon 4 Sheep Tokens, Beast Earth Level 1, Attack 0, Defense 0, in defense position. They cannot be tributed for a tribute summon. You cannot summon other monsters the turn you activate this card, but you can normal set. So this card might seem very very restrictive, but you actually can use the tokens for a variety of things. For example, you can use this card to block four attacks from your opponent's monsters. That was a pretty popular way to use Scapegoat back when it first released. But also you could tribute these Scapegoat tokens for Metamorphosis, a card that could then summon a monster like Thousand Eyes Restrict. This was the core combo in a deck known as Goat Control. Scapegoat is even in the name of that deck. So obviously Scapegoat was a big deal way back then but Scapegoat saw play throughout the years as well. You can't use the GOAT tokens for Xyz monsters, but you can use them for Synchros and Link monsters, so Scapegoat has seen a ton of play throughout the years in a variety of decks. I think that Scapegoat has a very unique set of restrictions. You have to use it basically on your opponent's turn every single time if you want to combo with it, but despite those drawbacks, it did see a ton of competitive play. This is probably one of Joey's most iconic spell cards, and it's really cool that it actually saw a ton of play at real life tournaments over the years. Next up, Joey played Foolish Burial, a card that in the anime was pretty terrible compared to the TCG version. I looked this up, but in the anime, Foolish Burial sends a card from your deck to your opponent's graveyard, not your own. In the TCG, it only sends monsters, not any card, but it sends it to your own graveyard instead of your opponent's. Besides the mechanical issues of sending a card to your opponent's graveyard, just in general that effect would not have been very good, but luckily in the TCG the card is a lot better, and it has seen play many times throughout the years. Even to this day, despite the card being over 10 years old, Foolish Burial has remained one of the easiest ways to send monster cards to the graveyard. Pretty much any deck that plays monster cards that have graveyard effects is 
probably going to play Foolish Burial. This card is so generically useful, it's so easy to use, that it's been a competitive mainstay for pretty much its entire existence. The card has honestly only gotten better with age. Foolish Burial might not be the most iconic Joey card, but it was a card he played and it's a card that has seen a ton of competitive use. When he was possessed by Merrick, Joey used Regeki. Now that might not totally count because he was possessed, but I'm going to count it and it was pretty cool because this was the only appearance of Regeki in the anime as far as the wiki says. Regeki obviously is a great card, it's basically a better version of Dark Hole in like 90% of situations. Yeah, Dark Hole can be used to trigger your own effects as well if you have some destruction effects or graveyard effects, but a lot of the time that doesn't really matter. So Regeki is usually better. Regeki saw play for many years, it was banned for a lot of years as well. Right now it doesn't see that much play, we have a ton of other removal options, but it's not the worst card if you really wanted to play it. Regeki is a very iconic spell card that saw tons of competitive play and Joey used it in his deck when possessed by Merrick. Joey also played Trap Hole and Bottomless Trap Hole. Now obviously the original Trap Hole got power crept pretty early on in Yu-Gi-Oh's history, but Bottomless was a great competitive card for many years throughout many different formats. These cards aren't that popular anymore. I'm pretty sure the current Trap Tricks deck doesn't even play Bottomless. I think cards like Floodgate Trap Hole are a lot more common, but Bottomless isn't even the worst choice if you wanted to run it today. More importantly though, it saw play for a ton of years, even in more modern times. Next up, Joey played Question, a card that might seem like a joke, but actually it has seen some competitive use. Question is a very weird normal spell card that says, when activating this card, your opponent cannot check cards in the graveyard. Your opponent calls the name of the first monster found at the bottom of your graveyard. If he or she calls it right, the monster is removed from play. If he or she calls it wrong, the monster is special summoned to your side of the field. I do want to note here that the last time Question was printed was all the way back in 2005, so that's why that text looks very strange compared to modern cards. I'm kind of surprised this card hasn't gotten a reprint just to update it with problem solving card text. But yeah, Question did see play in a variety of decks throughout the years. It was never a super popular choice, but I remember it seeing play in Cosmo decks for example. Those ones could use Question to revive some of their Cosmo spaceships that were already in the graveyard. Question is at its best when your opponent doesn't see it coming, and for a while, I mean, people were playing Monster Reborn, so Question was kind of like extra copies of that card. I'm not entirely sure if Question actually ended up topping any events, but it did see some competitive experimentation. Finally, Joey played the Warrior Returning Alive. This card saw play in a lot of different characters' decks throughout the years, but yeah, Joey used it too, and as I've talked about in the past, this was a great piece of generic Warrior support for many many years, a lot of different decks played it. Nowadays you don't see the warrior returning alive very often, but back in the day it was pretty popular, especially when the game didn't have as much recycling as we do nowadays. Anyway, that is all for today's video, I hope you guys enjoyed it, I'll see you later, thanks so much for watching, goodbye.